Do you think that having a lot of lust means that you are a type 8 or that someone else is a type 8? Then keep watching this video because I will tell you what the lust in type 8 actually means. And no, it's not just passion or intensity. Welcome back to Type Evolution, where we learn how to evolve with our understanding of personality type. I'm Olympia and this video is about Type 8 and the lust in Type 8. I've made a video about Type 8 before and how it's not about vulnerability. You can watch it either here or in the link in the description. And I wanted to go a bit more into Type 8 because there's still a lot of misconceptions about 8, especially when it comes to the so-called vice of lust. Someone recently asked me in the comments what my take on that is and whether it's related to passion or intensity or not. I have my trusted whiteboard with me again. Without further ado, let's just go into those three main points. As you can see, the first one is masculinity? Question mark. So I think a lot of the type 8 persona is considered quite masculine. And there are some reasons for that. One of the reasons is simply, it is possible that most men, or at least a vast majority of men, have a connection to type 8. And when I say connection, I don't mean main type. This is for the main type. I mean a wing or a fix, if you go by tri-type, just some kind of connection to 8. Most men in the world probably have that, or at least maybe like half men. A lot of men have it, okay? And very few women have a connection to type 8 in some shape or form. So that is why we probably consider 8 to be masculine. But besides all that, 8 has a bit of a masculine streak because it is very much concerned with power and dominance. The last is not literally about sex or hedonism. A lot of times people misunderstand lust in terms of oh, always wanting more. I go into that in a bit, but if it's just from a hedonistic perspective of just not never having enough, always need more and more, more stuff to do or to have or to experience, that is actually more of a type 7 trait. 7 is the hedonist. So this is the difference there. 7, for 7 it's really the sake of having more. And also with type 3, type 3s might also want to get more things, but for them it is really much connected to how the world perceives them, if they are perceived as successful, and for them success equals love. For 8, it is not specifically about success or about having everything. Of course, 8s also, I would say, almost always have a connection to 3 or 7 as well. But for eight specifically, it's about wanting more power and dominance, being the top dog, the alpha on the top of the food chain, being the authority, the leader. Helen Palmer also calls eight the boss, which I think is a pretty fitting term. In the past, maybe eight would have been called the king or queen, just someone who's at the top. If eight can be on top or can be powerful or dominant, without being successful, then they would do it. But of course, nowadays in our era, success is often correlated with power. And that's why many eights strive to be successful, but not always. And yeah, many eights also, as I said, have a connection to seven, either, either as a seven wing or some kind of configuration in their so-called tri-type. By the way, that's a theory by Catherine Favre. So eights often do have the tendency to wanting more and more and more stuff as well. But the main focus is really on power, dominance. So in men, that is often considered like toxic masculinity. And it's really just toxic type eight traits. There's even men who have no eight connection whatsoever or very weak eight connection. And it's going to be INFP, eyes of shade, INFJ men. They are going to have the least of an eight connection. So they might be considered, I guess, the most feminine, but I wouldn't really go there because 
I don't think it's necessarily just being feminine. It's just having a lack of this driving force in you. So this kind of lust in the eight, as I said, is connected to power dominance in the external world. And it is typically through the means of practicality. Practicality, logic. So this is where it goes into the T aspect and E aspect because in the external world, the main focus is on the external world. I know there are people who think they can be an introvert and they can be type eight, but it defies what the issue, core issue of eight really is. The core issue of eight is supported by extroversion. It's the focus on the external and having power and control and dominance and leadership and authority in the external world is an extroverted outlook. And you cannot really get that just by focusing first on the internal, which is introversion. So this is the mark, marker of E, e extroversion, and also T, thinking, thinking logic. Eights in the extreme can see people just like as numbers or as objects. So this is kind of where it goes to T or S. Uh, so yeah, this is, like I said, how it can go into the extreme when it's really unhealthy and dark. And lust itself, if you just think about like sex or romance or romantic relationships, that is the sexual instinct. So if you have high sex drive, that does not mean you are an eight. It could, it could just mean you are some other kind of type, but most likely you have the sex instinct first. If you are a guy, you can also have a high sex drive and having the sex instinct last. But as a woman, what I've seen is usually they have the sex instinct first. Anyway, so <laughs> the last, like I said, is for power and dominance. And ironically, if it is without the sexual instinct, it can actually be quite dry, quite cold and harsh. So the last, if it's like social self-press, is going to be very much focused on the power and dominance in the social world, social status, being like a CEO, for example, being at the top, the, the boss, the top of the food chain, <laughs> I guess I would kind of think of like Jeff Bezos here, but um, like he would be an example. I think he's an ETJ8. And self-preservation, the last for self-preservation, it's not really gluttony. Like I said, like many people think, oh, AIDS is all about wanting more, more, more. And some ex to some extent, yes, but it's all about wanting more power and dominance. Just wanting more itself is hedonism that's more seven. So it's not about like eating as much as you can, though it... It's more about what it means. Like if you can eat as much as you want because you have the resources to do that, you have acquired a dominant position and that usually means having a lot of money. So this is, I know this is how eight and three often kind of seem to overlap there. They often strive for having a lot of money. But with eight, really, it's about the, the power kick they get out of it. Like they feel like, oh, I got it. Like, yes, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> like having the, being in control and charge. If that is connected to being rich, then they will be rich. But it can also be connected to other things. And the sexual instinct, yeah, of course, there can also be a component here. The sexual instinct with lust. But once again, it's not necessarily having all kinds of sexual partners or having a lot of sex either. Like I said, this is more of a type seven connection. Eight also has a very possessive tendency. Both, I would say both, both eight and two, that's kind of, they also have a connection point, right? Eight and two, they both can be very possessive when they are unhealthy in their own ways. With eight, the possessiveness is really literally being in charge of the person, having power, dominance, control over the person, like like being able to tell them what to do, how to live their lives, how to dress, how to eat, like all these kinds of things are all connected to eight. And eight can get a kick out of that if they are really unhealthy and toxic, so to speak, or a dark side. If you do not recognize yourself in these traits, then most likely you do not have an eight connection. I also made a video about what eight is not. I mentioned it before, I think, already. So yeah, with eight, the last for power, dominance, control, being in charge, 
And also other types can be quote unquote control freaks, but for different reasons. Like type one can be a control freak because they think everything has to work perfectly how I perfectly envision it, like it has to be perfect. And also threes might also be obsessed with control and perfection, but for them it's all in relation to success, what, they're, what, what other people will find successful or admirable in them. And for one, it's all about what is the right way, what, what are the rules of life, right? That's the type one perspective. With eight, the control is really about having the power. Like this is really the main focus. So that, yeah, unhealthy eight, you also see an unhealthy toxic guys oftentimes, but it can even be women, just not as commonly. It can be really like being cons like in control of your mate. And like I said, telling them what to do, how to live, live their lives and so forth. If you have, if you keep being stuck in this vice of type eight lust, or just uh, lust for power, power hungry, maybe that's a better term, power hungry. If you are too power hungry all the time, and if you have, like eight has also this very limited world view or modus operandi where it's all about, I need to exert and attain the most powerful authoritative position because that will ensure that my needs get met. This is how eight usually operates and can be very unconscious. So if you find yourself being stuck in this mentality, because if it's, especially if it's toxic or unhealthy or dark, it can be very destructive. And you might even have a lot of money, like a lot of eights who have a connection to self-preservation or even who don't, I'm gonna go into that in a moment, they can like, their lust for power control dominance, they can, as I said, can push them to make lots of money, to be really rich or to have like a partner that was difficult to attain and that they can also control. Or, and if they have like a big social status, like if they're like at the top of the game, like someone like Harvey Weinstein back in the day, he was a good, exa a good example of a bad example, I guess. Uh, so you can have all these instincts fulfilled to some extent, but still it's also important the priorities you have and how you get those needs met and your mindset about it, how you feel and think about what you have. So like I said, an eight who is really rich can still be very unhappy and still be very dark, toxic and so forth. I looked up, you know, like there's so many different terms for the virtue of eight. One is innocence, for example. And I think that's also a bit of a problematic term. And it goes back to the whole vulnerability issue. Eight is not really about vulnerability per se, but they they kind of lose, let's say, their innocence while striving to be the most powerful, the most dominant, the most authoritative, in charge. And then also they have the tendency to seek out people who seem innocent and then to control them or to arrange their lives. So that's why I don't really like the term innocence for eight. Uh, but in, in, to some extent it's about yeah, recognizing, let's say, the innocence within themselves and it can be feelings that are not related to power and dominance and control. So what an eight could do, so instead of always thinking you have to be the most powerful, the most dominant in control, actually allowing others to be the lead and to follow them and to learn from them. I guess it's also the connection to five in another video called five, like the better visa or the know-it-all. Um, so five often thinks they know best, <laughs> they have the best knowledge, the best theory and so forth. And eight can kind of overlap there a bit, also thinking they have the best way or best method to acquire wealth, power, dominance and so forth. So yeah, it's allowing that to kind of soften a bit. And as I said, I also want to mention with the instincts uh, for that, you can watch the video about my bucket analogy or like the priorities for the instincts social, sexual, self-preservation, everyone has their own order and what can happen with eight uh, or with anyone really, they can focus too much on an instinct that doesn't really make them that happy. And that's usually the last instinct. So I've, okay, so I've had a client who used to think he was an INFJ and who used to think that he should make as much money as possible because that would make him like happy and whatever. But he had really like some issues. And uh, so we talked 
And through our conversations, it became very clear to me that he was actually an ETJ8 and that he was, he was actually SXSO, sexual, social and self-preservation was last. And he was like so focused on making money, but he was not really entirely fulfilled. Ada agreed with me, oh yeah, actually I'm an ETJ, that makes, make, makes more sense. And that he's a type eight and that he's SXSO. So for him, the advice is really to focus more on improving his relationships in a more healthy way and improving how he deals with people in a more healthy way. Like he had some really extreme behaviors where he would really, also like I said, AIDS also because they're like dominant power focused, they can also bully people. So he kind of used to bully people in order to get to a higher position, like um, how you say, um, to have more power or dominance or being like considered a kingpin within the social group. So then I kind of uh, made him aware of that and how it's really better not to engage in that. Um, and so with the humility, what can happen is a healthy aide actually moves towards more of a hero because they will then, I mean, okay, every type has like a hero version, you could say. With aide, it's really literally becoming like the leader, but a, a leader that has race, that has that kind of innocence in them. And that's really how you kind of move from the last for having more power and dominance and control to how can I make sure that I am being a leader I'm a, or I'm having power, but I'm using that power for the greater good. So this is where aid becomes healthier. I also wrote down some MBTI types there. Now, I also made videos about the problems with MBTI and how the test nowadays is not really the Jungian types anymore. So please watch that video as well if you're curious about that. But because I know most people still go by these letters, I'm just going to have them here anyway. So type 8. If you are a type 8, you're going to be either an ESTJ, ENTJ or ESTP. I know this is debatable, of course, but this is based on my practice and the theory. I might make a separate video about that. And... INFP, ISFJ and INFJ have no A connection usually whatsoever. Like they are the most removed from, from type 8. All the other Jungian types can have some kind of connection to 8, but these are the most removed from it, just so you know. Okay, so this is my overview of 8. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I also offer coaching services and typing. At the moment, I recommend people to get first typed and then have a coaching package with me. So you can find all of that ty on typevolution.com services. And you have to scroll down a little bit and look at Type Coaching Plus. This is the package where you both have a typing and where you have a coaching package with me. Because I think this is really the most important way to go about the personality types, where you actually improve and change your life rather than just knowing your type and then going about your day. <laughs> Okay, have a good day. Bye.